Today, Kootenai County's new sheriff was sworn in. What he has to say about his new role tonight. Bloomsday kicked off registration for their virtual race this year. The race will now be called Bloomsday Worldwide. Snow continues to melt across the inland northwest with above normal temperatures. More wet and mild weather on the way for this weekend. Good evening, everyone, and Happy New Year to you. I'm Regina on Mark and Whitney are off. Well, Kootenai County has a new sheriff. Roger Nor Robert Norris, excuse me, was sworn into his new role as sheriff just a few hours ago. First order of business swearing in new staff. Sheriff Norris also announced his plans to form a new citizens advisory group and the sheriff's clergy council. He says the groups will help him connect with the community, stay updated on its needs and give him input. There's a lot of people that have a lot of at risk issues that I want to connect with and our clergy is able to still have religious services and they connect with many, many people, thousands of residents here in Kootenai County and they are going to be part of this. Sheriff Norris so I, says any pastor leading a congregation in the county are welcome to apply. He expects the clergy council to consist of 10 members, which he will select. He adds while the population of Kootenai County is showing an aggressive growth, an increase in crime rates will follow, which is why he plans to adopt operational strategies based on input from town hall meetings to address this. And coming tonight at six, how the new sheriff plans to set himself apart from his predecessors. And today, minimum wage workers in Washington will get a 19 cent raise. Workers will be paid 13.69 an hour. And for the first time since 2016, this increase was calculated from inflation, not a voter approved ballot measure. So starting today, the state of Washington is capping co-pays for insulin at $100 total for a 30 day supply. Insulin is now covered without being subjected to a deductible. This law applies to both state regulated commercial insurance and public employee plans. Well, starting today, Idaho police will start issuing tickets to drivers who violate Idaho's hands free law. The law says the only time you can use a handheld device is when your car is parked and off the road. That means you cannot use a handheld device while waiting for a red light to change. Tickets will range from 75 to $300. The extension of COVID-19 restrictions in Washington could put a damper on a popular New Year's resolution of getting in shape. Gym owners say they're going to miss out on what's usually the busiest time of the year. It's really hard. Um, I'm torn because I really do think that the safety of the overall community and, and sometimes making some of those sacrifices is what people need to do in order to get out of this. I know I'll survive. What that's going to look like coming out of it is going to be the interesting question. Well, the governor's restrictions on indoor dining and recreation is extended until at least January 11th with no word on what's going to happen next. And new tonight, the U.S. Senate delivered the first successful override of President Trump's veto of the national defense bill. Earlier, Senate Republican leaders killed a final attempt for a vote on the House bill to give $2,000 stimulus checks to many Americans. The House Democrats bill is just simply not the right approach. This is the last chance to deliver $2,000 before a new Congress is sworn in. And the new Congress convenes on Sunday. It will face its first test just three days later with dozens of House Republicans and GOP Senator Josh Hawley expected to contest contest the counting of the electoral votes. The president praised Holly on Twitter, saying America is proud of Josh and the many others who are joining him. Meanwhile, the clock is ticking down to Georgia's two crucial Senate runoff elections on January 5th. The outcome there will determine which party controls the U.S. Senate. Spokane's first responders are next in line to receive COVID-19 vaccinations. The Regional Health District is opening a clinic this upcoming Monday at the Spokane Fire Training Center. And by the 10th day of their drive through location, 3,000 high-risk responders will receive their first doses of the vaccine. Interim Health Officer Dr. Francisco Velasquez says this is the next step to ensure healthy conditions all across the region. So we had like three different seals of approval which is more than we've ever had for any other vaccine. So I want to reassure everyone that these vaccines are as safe as any other vaccine, perhaps not even more. 
For now, the clinic is only open to high risk. First responders, a new vaccine site will have the capacity to serve 24 people an hour once they open up on Monday. But what's the question we all have? When will life in 2021 return back to normal? Reporters from our Seattle sister station, Kayla Lafferty, got some answers. Essential workers, sanitizers, face masks, social distancing, vaccines, all 2020 buzzwords. When you popped the champagne cork last year, did you ever think we'd be talking about all this? Probably the biggest question heading into 2021, when will things start to look better? So it all depends on the vaccine. If we have the vaccines that we have been promised to get, Sometimes in May, June, we can go back to normal. Dr. Ali Mokdad from UW predicts by May or June, 70 to 80% of us should be vaccinated. That's about 250 million people. But he says we can only return to normal if... We have vaccines on time and we are able to vaccinate. No side effect, no anti-vaccines coming after the vaccine rumors and stopping the vaccination. May, June, we can go back to our normal lives. Vaccines are one thing. Convincing people to get vaccinated is another. So what about those rumors Dr. Mokdan was talking about? You may hear in the news and on social media of people who recently got vaccinated, getting sick or even dying, making people wonder, is the vaccine safe? Consider this. The University of California, San Francisco points out if 10 million people get the COVID-19 vaccine over the following two months, purely based on how many people normally get sick, 4,000 of those people will have a heart attack. Another nearly 4,000 more will have a stroke. 9,500 will be diagnosed with cancer. 60 will be diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and 14,000 will die again with or without a vaccine. There's kind of a fear out there that some of these people that are anti-vaccine might use those statistics and try and spread that disinformation. So what do you have to say about that? So every effort that needs to be done to make sure this vaccine is safe and effective is being done. So the anti-vaccine is attacking COVID-19. is very concerning because it means they want people not to take the regular vaccines that our children take in order to stay alive. So it's very dangerous and we need to stay on top of it. And once you're vaccinated, Dr. Mokdad says, don't be so quick to get rid of all of your masks. When I get my vaccine, I will still wear my mask. And if I'm going on a plane, even in June, July, I'll be wearing a mask because we need to be very careful until we are 100% sure that we reach that herd immunity and the virus is not circulating. But remember, I mean, we had holidays that many people celebrated without their loved ones. So we don't want to lose any more. Uh, vaccines are the only way we can get out of this one. And with that, here's to a happy, safe and healthy 2021. Definitely cheers to that. Well, here's a live look now at beautiful downtown Spokane tonight. I just love those colors. I mean, heading out there in person too. If you haven't done it, you should definitely do it. I did so a couple days ago. It was just breathtaking. Loved it. Okay, turning to weather. Michelle, I heard the Spokane area could see some high winds this weekend. Yeah, this weekend is going to be featuring lots of wet weather, lots of mild temperatures and some potential for some strong winds, especially Saturday night into Sunday. But speaking of the mild temperatures, we've certainly experienced that for much of this week since the snow fell. Temperatures have not fallen below freezing in the Spokane area and today temperatures right now in the upper 30s. So that snow continues to melt rapidly. A little bit cooler right now in Coeur d'Alene, 34, but 36 in Deer Park, mid 30s in Moses Lake in the 40s right now in Lewiston. Taking a look at satellite and radar things have been relatively quiet today, especially in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. We've had cloudy skies, but it's mainly stayed dry. We are expecting some wet weather to move in later this evening and during the overnight hours, but for the lower elevations, it's going to mainly be rain. We are looking at the potential for some heavy snow, though, at Lookout Pass. So if you do have any travel plans Saturday afternoon into Sunday morning, a winter storm watch has been issued for elevations above 4,000 feet. So 4th of July pass should be OK, but in those higher passes, uh, Lookout Pass, 4,500 feet, there's the potential to see 8 to 15 inches of snow. Again, this is from Saturday afternoon into Sunday morning. In addition to those strong winds, wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour. Here locally, things uh, staying relatively quiet through the afternoon, but we will see some rain move in later this evening and overnight. Look at those temperatures. We are not going below freezing tonight either. Tomorrow, we could see highs in the mid 40s with rain showers. Those strong winds gust 40 to 50 miles per hour Saturday into Sunday and then highs on Sunday again in the mid 40s still in the 40s on Monday with additional rain showers.
All right, Michelle, thank you. Well, as of this morning, you can now register for this year's Blooms a race. Last night at five, we brought it to you as breaking news that this year's race will once again be virtual like it was in 2020. Creme 2's Brandon T. Jones shares with us details of the upcoming Bloomsday worldwide event. 26,000 people participated in Bloomsday 2020, and of course, things were drastically different. <laughs> For the first time in the history of the race, there wasn't a large gathering in Spokane, but there were people in different places across the globe who were able to sign up and participate wherever they were. Bloomsday was successful last year as a virtual event, and I think more races worldwide will will continue being virtual or having virtual options. Longtime participants like Brennan Pointer told me he's a bit disappointed with the return to the virtual format, but he understands why it has to be this way. We were all thinking, this is only going to be 2020. This year's race will be held between April 30th and May 9th. Runners who sign up will choose their own personal course that equals 12 kilometers or just shy of seven and a half miles. Once they're done, they'll submit finished times to the Bloomsday website and receive finisher shirts through the mail. Uh, that part of, of their lives, that tradition that they hold near and dear to them every spring um, will continue. With registration officially open, Bloomsday race director John Neal is hopeful about the future. 20 different countries participated last year, and that number could increase in 2021. I, I love that I can share this with everyone, and we can share this with everyone, and you can come and take a part of what I believe is easily one of the best races in the world. From Spokane, Brandon T. Jones, Crim2 News. All right, Brandon, thank you. Well, the rollout of the coronavirus vaccine in Washington has been slower than expected. Experts say the holidays may be to blame for that. We'll have more information when we come back after this short break.